Teen Parenthood, Pregnancy Not Included, by Dogs Are the Best 312. Summary. A quirk accident and a bright light deposit a screaming baby into Aizawa Shota's arms, and it just goes downhill from there. All Shota wanted was a nice date with his boyfriends, a visit to their favorite cat cafe, a walk through the park, then back to one of their houses for a movie. Just a nice Saturday evening after a long week of classes. Was that too much to ask? Apparently, it was, because instead of petting cats, Shoda was standing between Hisashi and Obero while holding a baby. A screaming and butt naked baby at that. Shoda bounced him gently, hoping to calm the infant. It was uh, completely ineffective. If he'd been in a clearer mindset, he would have handed the baby to one of the idiots beside him. Kami knows both of them were better with kids than he was, but he'd been surprised by a baby appearing with a burst of bright light. Sue him. Actually, don't. He's a broke high school student. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for my quirk to activate. Um, well... Here's the awkward part. I hope you three are friends, or at least know each other. A woman in her early 30s stood before them, bowing so low that her head was almost hitting the sidewalk. Just a minute ago, she'd tripped on her shoelace and smacked all three of them in the face as she fell. That's when the flash of light and the baby appeared. To Shoto's right, Hizashi gave a nervous laugh. Well, I hope they like me, given that we're dating. Uh, On Shota's other side, Obero took a second to gather his thoughts. What is your quirk? Some sort of emitter, right? It creates a baby. The woman's expression jumped from apologetic to nervous. Uh Uh-oh. Shota didn't like the look of this. Yes, uh, more specifically, it creates a baby from the DNA of whoever I'm touching. Huh, that's a unique quirk. Wait, what? She'd fallen into them, touching all three of them when that light flashed. That means... He looked down at the squirming baby in his arms. Yep, he saw it. His eye shape and skin tone, his Zashi's nose... Boro's hair. Fuck. Shoto looked up at his boyfriends uh, to see they both had identical looks of realization, panic, and fear. Well, at least he wasn't alone in this. It sure was going to be a really awkward conversation with their parents, though. One hour and one silent train ride later, Three teens were sitting side by side on Shota's bed. The baby squirmed in Obero's lap. Shota's parents hadn't been home when they arrived, but it was only a matter of time before they were. He was not looking forward to this. As usual, Hizashi broke the silence first. So, what are we naming him? Both Shota and Obero choked on nothing, but Hizashi kept uh, talking while playing with his ponytail. It was a bad habit of his uh, when he was nervous or stressed. Cause right now I'm calling him the baby in my head, and I know we didn't have uh, the usual nine months to prepare for this, but I really don't want to be leaving the little guy without a name. Said baby, now wrapped in the softest blanket Shota could find in the house, began to spit up bubbles as his fathers, is that what they were now, talked over one another. Oda? No. No food names. I like the name Mio. I doubt any kid of mine could have the word charming used to describe them. Aw, don't sell yourself short, show. Oh, here's one. What do you think of Ichiro? No, too literal. Oh, I've got one. How about Sana? Unless you don't want the kid to take after either me or Obero, that wouldn't fit at all. The three sat in silence for a moment, all of them looking up 
baby names on their phones. At some point, the infant ended up in Hazashi's hold. What about Hitoshi? Zosh, you just want him to have a name similar to yours. Shoda gave him a blank look. We are not naming the kid Ladle, Zashi, and we're not naming him Purple Person either. That's just asking for teasing from both his peers and ours. No, no, neither of those. I make compassion and aspiration. Like this. Passing the baby to Oboro, Hizashi grabbed a scrap piece of paper from Shoda's desk, writing out the kanji before showing it to the other two. Then he gave Oboro an offended look. And I don't want him to have a similar name to mine. I just really like it. Shoda and Oboro examined it the paper before looking at each other, then up at Hizashi. It does have a nice ring to it, Oboro said looking back at Shoda. Damn it, he couldn't withstand the double kitten eyes. Hitoshi it is. Then Shoda realized something. What about his family name? Immediately, Hizashi and Oboro's smiles turned to groans. Well, Hizashi said, at least we have limited options with this. How many ways can you arrange six kanji? As it turns out, there are 48 possible names if they wanted one kanji from each of their family names. The three teens did not know this, however, and instead of being systematic, they simply voiced ideas as they thought of them. Yamazawakumo? That's all the nature-related kanji of our names. No, that's too long. I'm out of breath just thinking about it. Yeah, I realized that as soon as I said it. Ayamashira Dazawakumo Kumadia? Ugh, those all suck. Oboro, your family name needs to be shorter. It's only two kanji show, just like yours and Zashi's. Yeah, but... You can't break them up into less than two hiragana. At least with mine and shows, we can. Ida Shira? That's the not nature related kanji for shows in my names, and the one hiragana kanji, kanji for Izashi's name. Honestly, that's not completely terrible. Wow, Shoda approved. Ida Shira Hitoshi does have a nice ring to it. It looks like that's the one then. As Hizashi and Oboro cheered, the door to Shoda's room opened. The three teens froze, staring wide-eyed at Shoda's mother. She smiled at them until she noticed the baby in her son's lap. Shokun, is there something you need to tell me? Aizawa Ichika spoke slowly and quietly like she thought doing so would change the presence of the baby. Shona looked from his mother to the baby, Hitoshi, he reminded himself, to his boyfriends. They looked just as panicked as him, so they were immediately ruled as useless for help. If it weren't for the fact that they no now shared a son, he'd consider kicking them both out of his house but he needed them to help explain this absolute mess of a day. Their parents were surprisingly understanding about everything, once they got over the shock of suddenly becoming grandparents, that is. Izashi's moms especially were supportive, though given how they had also been unexpectedly thrown into parenthood, it was almost expected. If Hisashi's biological parents weren't already in jail, Shoto would probably have put them back in the hospital where they abandoned their newborn. His bio parents, at least, had the decency to surrender him legally when he was four. And yes, that was said with all the sar sarcasm possible. So, where is Hitoshi going to live? Of the five parents, Shirakuma Aoki was uh, the weird wariest about it all. 
Then again, Obero's father had always been like that, supportive but skeptical. Shoda appreciated it. At least one adult was doing something other than cooing at the baby. The three teens looked at each other. They uh, hadn't gotten that far. Maybe they should have talked to him more while waiting for Hizashi's mom and Obero's dad. In their defense, they hadn't expected this to happen today. They may be hero students who saw weird shit, but this was crazy, even by their standards. On top of that, none of them had even babysat before. This was completely new territory. Before anyone could speak, however, all eight of their phones chimed with notifications. Hizashi had his hands full with the infant, so Shoda held his phone where the blonde could read it over his shoulder. Hello, Aizawa, Shirakumo, and Yamada families. This is Principal Nezu from UA High School. First of all, please let me be the first person to gr- congratulate you all on your new family member. Please let me know if you need anything to make your lives easier. I care about each and every one of my fam- of my students and their families. With that being said, there is an empty apartment in the building on a campus that many teachers live in. If the parents are agreeable, Aizawa-kun, Shirakuma-kun, and Yamada-kun could stay there with Aideshira-chan. That way, all three of you are able to be near him. Please let me know if your decision of your decision when you make it. The apartment is a is available for you to move into whenever you'd like. Additionally, you would be allowed to bring Aideshira Chan with you to class until you are able to find alternative arrangements. I have informed Hino-san about the situation and he will be expecting Aideshira Chan if you decide to bring him. Please let me know if you need anything else. Have a good evening. Shoda didn't even want to think about how Nezu knew about the situation. The UA principal worked in mysterious ways, understood by none but himself. He also wouldn't be surprised if the rat, mouse, bear, whatever, had their phones bugged. It had taken much debate, but eventually all eight of them agreed for the three teens to move on campus. While their parents were somewhat saddened to not be living with the baby, they agreed to buy weekly visits on Sundays. The rest of their Saturday was a flurry of movement. Between packing and buying baby things, it was a miracle they got it all done. Luckily, Hizashi's mom had kept a lot of uh, his baby clothes, and Obero's dad still had his crib. Even so, Shoda's mom ran to the store for diapers, baby formula, bottles, and a bunch of other things Shoda didn't even know the names of. The entirety of Sunday was spent moving the boys in. The apartment had four bedrooms, which made Shoda suspicious of Nezu's claim that it had just been sitting empty, though he did feel better knowing they'd each have their own room. Not that the three of them hadn't shared a bed before, but living together was different from staying a night. By the time they had all their stuff inside and mostly put away, everyone was exhausted. The parents left to allow them to settle in, and the three teens immediately collapsed together on the couch. Man, remind me never to move again, a bro sighed from next to Shoda. This isn't even all our stuff. Just what we need for the next few weeks. On Obero's other side, Hizashi groaned. Tell me about it. Let's just live here for the rest of our lives. We can even get jobs at UA. Then we could just walk to work every day. Well, not counting patrols. We can uh, turn one of the bedrooms into a home office and the other could become a home radio studio or a guest bedroom. Shoda couldn't help but snort at the mental image. Me, a teacher? Are you nuts? That could only end badly. He didn't say it out loud, but the rest of it sounded nice. 
Getting married to these two idiots, raising Hitoshi, add in a cat or six, and he could actually see himself doing just that. That thought both excited and terrified him. By the time Monday morning came, Shota was dead tired. Sure, he was a chronic insomniac, but even Shota's own mind let him sleep more than Hitoshi did. The past two nights had given him a new appreciation for new parents. This was like a home ec class on steroids. A onesie with the, the UA uniform printed on it had appeared outside their door that morning, and Hisashi insisted that Hitoshi wear it. Oboro had quickly agreed, and once again, Shota found himself caving to the double kitten eyes. Damn it. Walking through the halls of UA High School with a baby carrier was not something Shota had ever pictured himself doing, let alone during his time as a student. Luckily, he didn't actually have to hold the baby. Oboro had hidden the carrier in a cloud and the three of them walked around it so no one walked into it. This was a common enough occurrence for the three of them that the other students didn't bat an eye. If you looked closely, you could see Hitoshi's face sticking out. Oboro had been sure to shape the cloud so the infant could breathe while preventing others from seeing him. Shota was just surprised that Hitoshi wasn't wailing out of fear. Then again, he'd seen Oboro use his quirk while pa pa packing, so maybe he was uh, already used to it, or he was asleep. Babies sleep a lot, right? Between getting Hitoshi ready and navigating the halls, the three teens were the last to reach the 2A classroom. Hino-sensei nodded to them as Oboro's cloud went to his seat in the middle row. The three of them, however, stood at the front of the class. This got everyone's attention, though Hino-sensei looked confused. Shoto realized a second too late that Nezu might have lied about telling their teacher. So, Hizashi shouted, and Shoto reflexively used erasure to keep his volume down. Used to this, Hizashi didn't even pause. The three of us were out on Saturday and we ended up in the middle of a quirk accident. And well, now we're parents. He was met with a moment of silence followed by most of their classmates laughing. Tensei was the only one who didn't. Their friend just stared at them in shock. Yeah, right, you just want attention. There goes this Sensoji being an ass again. No, Zashi is telling the truth. We even brought him with us today. Look, with a faint poof, Oboro's cloud disappeared, revealing the baby carrier with Hitoshi in it. Almost immediately, the room is silent again. Everyone meet Aida Shira Hitoshi, as in Counselor Ricefield White, and compassion, asp and aspiration. He's two days old, and until we find a caretaker, he's going to be coming to class with us. It's Nezu approved, by the way. Shota hears uh, several whispered variations of what the, insert expletive here, from his classmates. A glance at Hino Sensei confirmed his suspicion that no, Nezu did not inform the teacher of the, the d situation. The pro hero shakes himself out of his shock, muttering what sounded like damn rats enjoying this to himself. A thud is heard from the back of the room, and Shoda turns to see that Tensei has slammed his head into his desk, though his whole body is shaking, and uh, for a moment Shoda is worried something is wrong. But then he hears the laughter. Tensei sits up properly, wiping a few tears from his eyes. Oh, Kami, only the three of you would find yourselves in a situation like this. Just wait until Nim hears about this. What even happened? As his boyfriends retold the story, Shoda couldn't help but smile. Sure, this was going to be difficult, 
parenthood was hard, let alone parenthood in high school while training for a dangerous job with your two partners. The class started to approach the carrier and a part of Shota wanted to pull them back by their collars. He didn't want them getting germs all over his son. Wait, his son? He had a son? Shota could just see the tiny head of purple hair between the group of second year students. The head turned in his direction and Shota found himself looking at the baby. For a brief moment, the father and son just uh, stared at one another. Then Nakamura distracted him with her quirk and he looked away. It was finally sinking in that he was a dad now. He had a responsibility to take care of his kid. He had a new reason to become a hero now. He, Hisashi, and Obero. He already knew that those two idiots were it for him, but Hitoshi's arrival just cemented that in his mind. They had no clue what they were doing, but between their parents and friends, they would have help. Tensei was already claiming the position of Hitoshi's favorite uncle, and Nemere was sure to do the same for that of his favorite aunt. And really, did any new parent know what they were doing at first? It was both a comforting and slightly worrying thought. It was going to be trial and error, both concerning Hitoshi and just learning how to live with Hisashi and Oboro. But they'd figure it out. They always did. As long as Hisashi and Obero were at his side, Shoda knew he could do anything. Okay, that's finally done. I don't know how long this video is. I don't know if I want to know. Uh, but fun fact, fun fact, I usually record on Wednesdays. I usually upload on Sundays. It is Sunday. 1 16 a.m. I forgot to record on Wednesday. <laughs> so here I am sitting in the bathroom as usual. I don't I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to record on Wednesday. I really didn't want to record today, but I was like, oh yeah. Got that YouTube channel. Also, I have 360 subscribers. What? Like, I I freshly got 300 subscribers last Sunday. I know that because I was like, oh, I should probably thank them for subscribing because 300 subscribers, wow. Um, but then it, it was already Sunday and I was supposed to upload it in like two hours. Also, I had already like scheduled it for upload, meaning I basically already put it on YouTube. It just would automatically upload uh at a certain time being 12 o'clock p.m my time i don't know what time that is in other time zones i don't know what time zone i'm in i don't care that much but uh yeah uh so 12 p.m on sundays is when my videos are usually uploaded so i just didn't feel like taking it down and then having to re-upload it after i edited it edited it oh my gosh edited it again um because that is annoying. Uh, so I don't know where I was going with that. Oh yeah, I was thanking y'all for subscribing. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys though. 360 something subscribers. That's great. That's great. Uh, no, that, that, that's actually thank you. Uh, but what else? I know I was going to say something, but I don't remember. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I will see you guys probably next week. Maybe not, uh, considering it, it, I didn't record this Wednesday. And so I probably won't record again on Wednesday. <laughs> I need, I need to actually do the thing that I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. But I don't. I don't. Uh, but yeah, so I will see you guys probably next week with another video. Also, also, I just remembered what I was going to say. 
so the 15 going on five series has been temporarily discontinued i know i'm so sorry <laughs> hence all the one shots i have asked a different author if i can do their uh multi-chapter fanfic but right now they haven't gotten back to me now for the reason why i'm temporarily quite possibly permanently discontinuing the 15 going on 5 series is i may have kind of sort of not asked the author for permission and i know that is really bad it's bad podfic etiquette but in my defense i was um <laughs> it was it was late and i didn't know about podfic edit it, etiquette and i was just like hey let's start a youtube channel because it was like midnight and i was bored uh but now i know that hey if you want to use someone's work maybe ask so i have uh asked them now and i am uh waiting a response uh so if i do get that response and it's a yes then i will continue it if I get a response saying no, then I will discontinue it. And if they ask me to take it down, then that is why I'm going to do, because that is the right thing to do. And I might actually make all the current videos private uh, just because I didn't ask and that is wrong. Uh, but I might not, uh, I don't know. I'll probably only take it down if they ask me to. And right now I'll just leave them up. Yeah yeah that that that's what's going to happen <laughs> so thank you guys for 300 subscribers you guys are great i love you uh and since i love you take care of yourself honestly even if i didn't love you you should take care of yourself because you are you and you are great uh so water take meds if you have it eat sleep uh don't be like me i told y'all what time it is don't be like me please sleep uh and is that it that's it i will see you guys next week bye